Jan, let's record. And now I died. I look like crap. No. Okay, let me go get dressed. God. Show me what you got. How's it going, guys and geeks? Welcome back to the Geek Critique Show. I'm Dakota. And I'm Jen. Jen, looks like you got dressed. Here. Not really. <laughs> so, I took my ponytail out, put my contacts in, and put on pants for you guys. You're welcome. We got a lot to talk about, especially when it comes to the Lord of the Rings series that Amazon has officially signed on to their streaming service, Amazon Prime. Which is crazy that they signed on to the whole thing. We really don't know that much about it. We just know that it's going to be separate from or it's before the yeah the, the events Eurasia. the events are to precede the the events of lord of the rings yeah so i mean new storylines according to them i don't know i'm not like a lifelong tolkien fan i've been a tolkien fan for what like maybe four or five years and still like i, I don't speak elvish i'm not that like that intense but i do really love the movies and i'm a little worried you just... don't speak quenya <laughs> Do you? <laughs> no, I don't speak Quenya. Very few people do. I'm just saying, like, it's kind of crazy to think of how hard Tolkien worked and all that he did and accomplished, and just have people, like, willy-nilly adding to it is a little scary. We don't know that these are going to be stories that aren't written by Tolkien, because there is a lot of stuff that he hasn't published. There are a lot of unfinished yeah, storylines. There are other things that they can adapt, like the Silmarillion. Uh, it, I would love for them to readapt The Hobbit because those films were just glitter covered yeah, garbage. Yeah, I hated them. Uh, I enjoyed them. I grew up on the Peter Jackson films. Those were my Star Wars as a kid. Um, my favorite scene ever in anything is You Bow to No One. My friends. actually have the prints of it from an uh, artist named Mod Hero, which you guys should definitely check out. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I choke up every time I see that scene. Every time? <laughs> every time I see the painting, really. Tears have been shed on this night. I try not to look up. <laughs> yeah, basically. So let's talk a little bit about this deal that Amazon has struck with the Tolkien Estate, which by the way, the Tolkien Estate, I've always pictured as like this uh, kind of mystical fairyland, like full of like rolling green hills, hobbit holes, and dragons made of shrubbery. Let's start back at the beginning. The Tolkien estate put the rights up for a potential series uh, for the, the, the highest bidder, basically. They, they, they opened the doors to that. They opened the gates to that. That too doesn't show a lot of love. It's just like, we want the money! At the end of the day, if the highest bidder is willing to pay the highest price, they are willing to make it right. That's one way you can look at it. Yeah, I guess. Netflix bid somewhere in the range of a hundred million dollars just for the rights. This has not, that's oh not that's not how much it's gonna cost to make the show. Holy that smokes. is just the rights. Amazon Prime bid anywhere from two hundred to two hundred and fifty million just for the rights. They don't have anyone signed on at this point. Well I think they have I think they have some executive producers and all that, but they don't have any scripts written, they have they have nothing uh, in the pipeline as far as what's actually happening with these stories. But think about spending $250 million, that's more than your average like action hero film, more than your normal superhero film by, by a long shot. That's like Avengers style money that they're throwing at just the rights. If they were to, let's just put it, in, put it this way, season eight of Game of Thrones, the episodes alone are gonna cost 15 million each, which is astronomical, it's, it's stupid money. They could, they could pay for two seasons of Game of Thrones just with the rights that they uh, paid down. Holy smokes. That's a lot of dough. And I'm actually, I was very skeptical when I, when I first heard the news because I, you know, you read the headline, Amazon to make a Lord of the Rings series. In my opinion, the films are perfect. I can watch those 
Yeah, endlessly. And then you have the extended editions, which it's like... Well, that's the only way to how watch can them, you really. ever? Yeah, how can you ever run out, you know, like, you just keep watching it? I... They are the perfect films, in my opinion. They are my... I, I consider The Lord of the Rings the my favorite film of all time. Uh, all of them together. All Yes, because, you know, when you watch one, you have to start really early so that you can finish around midnight. <laughs> Limited bathroom breaks. He's a Nazi. <laughs> Whenever it, we watch it. When it comes to marathoning Lord of the Rings, I am very serious. Like, I'm marathon style, very casual. I'm like... Oh, I'm gonna make some more tea. Oh, do you want cookies? Let's make cookies. Oh, let's do this. This let's deserves cupcakes. No. <laughs> he does not. He doesn't like it. He doesn't even want to eat because he wants to limit his bathroom, bathroom breaks. breaks. Yes, definitely. Isn't that the saddest thing? How do you enjoy it? Oh, well, <laughs> that is all the food I need for that day. <laughs> that is. You must not live on Tolkien alone. So yeah, the, the first thought when I heard about the series that they were planning on making is, you know, I roll, how can you possibly make The Lord of the Rings better? How can you possibly compare to what Peter Jackson did uh, in the early 2000s? It's just uh, an astronomical thought to me. But I'm happy that it's going to be some stories that precede Yeah, that, that are different. It's not like they're just remaking it. Right. Now the question is, what exactly does that mean, preceding Lord of the Rings? Because Tolkien had thousands of years worth of history mm -hmm. set prior to the Lord of the Rings, you know? I have no idea. Needs hobbits. Needs elves. Elves are obviously the easiest yeah. thing to, to do because they're just like the coolest. Maybe Sauron's Uprising. That Perhaps. could be pretty cool. Interestingly, they have not gotten in touch with Peter Jackson yet. They haven't talked to anyone in New Zealand yet. That's not nice. I, I don't I don't know what it is. I don't. That's his baby. That is his baby. They need to talk to him. And it only makes sense for them to talk to him because he already. He's a living encyclopedia. He he spent two decades researching <laughs> and fleshing out the world in real life. Literally, if you go to New Zealand, there are several different locations that have like working sets of <laughs> Middle Earth, and. Man, that'd be a dream vacation. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Anyway, they have not they have not gotten in contact with Peter Jackson, so it's it's just kind of mind-boggling. Like that should be the first person you talk to. Just yeah. give the guy a call, send him an email. Like, hey, by the way, we want to collab. Send him a DM. Want to collab? Question mark. Amazon. <laughs> and he he must really love Lord of the Rings. Like that's something if you study that for so long and you make a series that well and rich and full you have to love it and want or at least be interested in getting back into it i don't know what went wrong with the hobbit trilogy i really don't now it's still very early talks i i do think that they will contact peter jackson and uh the proper rights holders wherever they are um, outside of the tolkien estate yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I, 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 I'm wondering where they're going to go with this. Because one thing that I've always said about epic fantasy, uh, no matter what series it is, um, it always starts in a place of general calm that's boiling up to, to, to a, a fever pitch. Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings started when Sauron was still in the shadows. He was still like gaining his army. The, the free people of Middle-earth did not have any uh, anything to be worried about until Sauron came back, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you think of stuff like Game of Thrones, it starts very slow. No dragons. No dragons, no drama, no magic, nothing. Uh, the world has calmed down, it's in a state of dip, and then hell, hell breaks loose. Um, you think of Wheel of Time, you think of Harry Potter, you think of Narnia, all of this stuff happens in periods of time, or it starts in periods of time that... No one's expecting... No one's expecting drama. Something crazy yeah. to happen, and that's why it becomes more epic, because you have that home to hold on to, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's how things were, because even through all of Lord of the Rings, it's like, you know, when they get back home and, and how things are going to be simple again. And I think that's right. kind of a theme where it's like the world gets chaotic, but you just want things to go back to simple family life again. I think that stems from like post World War One anxiety mm -hmm. of like the world was fine. There's a lot of history in the world. 
then boom 1914 chaos everywhere world at war you know that really shapes a lot of fantasy a lot of fantasy these days um, is shaped out of the great wars that have happened and um, even though Tolkien always said that uh, his stories weren't a parable to what happened in the Great War at, the, at his time, um, that was definitely an influence. Yeah. Knowing that Amazon is spending as much money as they are, I, I feel a little safer about it. They clearly want this to be a replacement Game of Thrones for people. But that, that literally, I was just about to say that and that's what I'm worried about. Because I feel like now that Game of Thrones is ending, everyone wants to start their epic show. And they're all basing it on nostalgia. And it's it's because they're they're looking for a cult following right off the bat. And, and I'm just worried that people are going to... I mean, one that you look at is um, the one that Marvel did. They poured a crap ton of money into that, thinking we have a cult following, and it just kind of fizzled out. In uh, humans? In humans. They poured a crazy amount of money into Inhumans and then nobody took to it so it's like money isn't enough in my opinion you need to take the t same time and love that you would put into a film series because yeah. it's not like we're just stupid and just going to spend our time watching something that's mediocre just because it has a title of a film series that we cared about and yeah, yeah I get it Game of Thrones is ending and that's going to fill a huge slot but also too fantasy because of Game of Thrones just kind of like spikes and I think everybody's trying to keep it going. So now seems like a really good time to introduce an idea that Jen and I are going to be working on and potentially some people from our own subscri subscriber base. Mm -hmm. um, Which is really exciting. <laughs> yes, uh, we're going to be kind of mapping out a timeline of the history of fantasy. I've had this idea for a couple of months and I think it's so intimidating to me that that's why I haven't started it, but it's been about how the genre of fantasy is shaped by world events, but then it also impacts, you know, future generations moving forward. There's just so much to think about and do that, I'm, you know, kind of, but we talked about it with some really cool people on our Discord and they've motivated me. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be fun, definitely. Uh, it'll be a long time coming, so uh, wait on that, but we want to hear your thoughts if that's something that you're interested in watching, something that you're interested in seeing. If you have any um fantasy series that you would like to be in there yeah not um, just not just like contemporary works yeah we, we're looking for, for a, a wide range of could be pre-tolkien could be post-tolkien um he is kind of like a landmark he's kind of like the start of bc <laughs> right yeah no he, he's he's the start of a new era of Fantasy. Fantasy. So it's interesting. So it could be on either end. We're not looking as much for contemporary because we kind of already know what's up. There's there's too currently. much coming out now. Yeah. It, it, the genre is like flooded right now. Like there's just so much, which is awesome. I'm not complaining about that. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So tell us your thoughts. Uh, we want to hear your thoughts, especially on the Lord of the Rings series that Amazon Prime is about to commence. They, they put all this money into it. You, you better believe that they're going to like be pushing this like crazy. So I um, want to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Again, my name's Dakota. And I'm Jen. Bye. Bye.